All right, so now we're going to move on and start looking at some of uh, some other elements that are used on a page that you know allow you to do some something kind of more specific. Um, so we're going to start off here looking at this div. Um, so these are the page division or div tags. So as as you can see here, this isn't really changing at least right now anything on the page, right? So you can see we have an H1 header and then we have a paragraph header and both of those are embedded inside of a div but you don't actually see anything happening and that's because we're not really using the div so divs are block level elements meaning they're going to take up like the full width of the page by default um, let's see if we can actually see how these are defined so to do this I'm just going to click on inspect here to open up the uh, up, open up to the developer tools and let's look at let's see here open up this body here expand this out so you can see here that this is a div it holds the header and then we have another div that holds that paragraph so effectively you can think of divs as basically containers um, that you're using to you know uh, create like subsections or, or divisions on the page these are used a lot especially once you start playing around with uh, using CSS um, or styles so um, just to show you that these things exist, let's just add real quickly some styles to the divs. To, we'll always use the first div here. So I'm going to create a style tag, and then I'm going to st I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it div one, and then we're just going to specify a background color, and I'll just do gray. And then we need to assign that. So we're going to assign this class or this div to the class div one. Let's see if this works. Nope, something didn't work. Style close. It didn't do something right. Dot div one. That's because I spelled background wrong. That explains it. There we go. So control S. Refresh this. That's not working. Oops. Let me uh, refresh this here. I think it's just not refreshing. There we go. So anyway, there we there you go. So this is showing the full extent of the that first div there, which I now have made as has has have said to have a gray background, right? So again, we're not doing much with divs right now, but you'll see these used a lot um, as we move forward, um, especially when we start playing with CSS. Um, now let's look at a span. So let's uh, kill this for now, and then we'll open up this span object. And let's uh, let's let's uh, have a look at that. So oh, this is not opening up. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. There we go. There we go. All right. So a span is different from a div in that it's not a block level object, but by default it's an inline object, which means that it's not going to take up a full row or, or uh, um, on the web page. So you can see here that I've created some paragraphs, and inside of here I've put in a span that I've wrapped part of the paragraph inside of. So here's part of the, here's our two spans, and then I'm applying a style up here where I'm setting a new text color and I'm bolding the text for just those spans. So this could allow you to do something like change the formatting of just a portion of a paragraph as opposed to the entire paragraph, and it's not going to again move this to a new line because it's an inline level element as opposed to a block level. Element element. So if we wanted, as you saw here, I use the font weight CSS property here to make this bold. So I could have you know, used like a bold tag, for example, but um, the span gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can apply not just bold, but some other styles. In this case, I changed the background color. Okay, so that's basically just a few examples then of um, pay, ways to kind of divide up material on the page. So we have our divs, which are block level, and then we have our spans, which are inline.